This video is going to demonstrate how to create object number three from this problem set. So um, object number three consists of this object here. And let's zoom in on this a little bit more so we can see it better. All right. So we have this three dimensional object could be some type of a marble trap or who knows what, but we're going to create it. Now, there are some notes here that we should be aware of, and it says for this object, the circular hole, uh, which we can see the circular hole kind of work vertically here, cuts through the curved body and into the lower base body. So essentially what that's telling you is there is one hole passing through the top part and partially into the bottom part. The second note says if viewed from the front, bottom or back, all parts of the object would have the same width. So that's another important thing to realize so that this entire object has the same and consistent width. Um, if we look at it, the there's really only one sketch that kind of gives us some information. And that sketch is what we're going to start with. And we're going to build from that first sketch to the back and then to the bottom. So it's almost like we're, you know, working in a circle here. So let's take a look at that first sketch. So um, if we zoom in on this a little bit, we can see that the shape has two arcs and two straight lines. It's actually a pretty simple shape. Just have to get everything lined up right. And one thing that is important to note is the center point for these arcs is horizontal with the two lines. We have a height of this object, we have a thickness of this object, and the rest will be determined by constraints. So let's go ahead and make that. Okay, so we're going to use the three-point arc, which I would probably say is my most used arc type. Um, I'm going to try and go ahead and let the, the uh, program put in the horizontal... Um, constraints here. You can see how it wants to line up my points. I'm going to let it do that because I'm going to end up needing that anyways. And if we look down here um, where the the second arc, the larger of the two arcs, actually intersects the center point, which gives us that little projection icon. And I can see the coincident yellow dot there too. So for the third point, of my larger arc, I'm going to use the center pointer origin, which pops up that green dot. So go ahead and click that. And now we're going to put the two lines in, which if we're lucky, we're going to have green dots getting us the coincident point. And they will be horizontal at the same time, which that gave us the horizontal. So we're good there. Let's try to do the same thing on the other side. So green dot, horizontal to the next green dot. Perfect. And it actually put in a parallel here, which kind of supersedes or uh, is pretty much acting the same way as in the example. There's that collinear um, constraint. So for our purposes, that will work. If you wanted to make sure you had it exactly as the example, you could uh, delete those constraints and put in collinears. That would also be acceptable. Not necessary, but acceptable. All right, what else do we see here? We see that both of these arcs have a concentric constraint. And we know that that means that these will share the same center point. So you notice the two center points in the sketch will become one center point. Now, I could also accomplish this by using a coincident between the two center points. But since uh, concentric is shown in the example, let's go ahead and use that. But both of them would effectively uh, achieve the same result. Now, let's go ahead and put our dimensions in. Okay, so we have a dimension between this line and the origin, or the bottom of the larger arc. And that number is 0.375, also known as 3 eighths of an inch. And there is another dimension between the two arcs and the two points are um, vertically like right in the middle of this so i have one point right here that i can absolutely create a dimension with but i don't really have another point here let's see if i can use that okay so i was able to use that point 
Um, I can zoom in and make sure that point works. So the point works, but it's actually not vertical. So I'm gonna have to go back and put in the vertical afterwards. Even though it's really close, it is not quite there. And that will also be one of the dimensions I need. Okay, let's see here. Now, one thing to notice is the two center points for these arcs in the example are, looks like uh, horizontal with the two lines. Now, horizontal and vertical can really interchange because it's all perspective. If I were using vertical here, I can click this button and now it's a horizontal. So in Fusion 360, they're actually the same button. But just understand that the dotted lines you see will determine more than the... Uh, it's really more accurate than the symbol itself. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to do a horizontal between two of these points. And you could actually select any of these four points because they're also on all the same line. Um, oh, here's where I could actually use the collinear again because I thought it would be exactly the same, but it is not. So it's not linking these two. It's just making them parallel. So collinear will actually work really well right there. I have a parallel too, which is fine. doesn't really matter. So now I've reached this point. It's pretty close. Something looks slightly off, but maybe I don't know what it is. So at this point, this is where I always recommend just to grab some purple and move it around. And what moves that shouldn't move? That's what you should be asking yourself. What's moving that shouldn't be moving? Well, the fact that I can move this line left and right tells me that uh, that's a problem. So if I look over here, I've got, it looks like uh, verticals or horizontals. I have that relationship between these two points. So let me uh, put the same thing in here. So I'm going to use vertical on this point. And there we go. So now we, uh, that constraint keeps us from moving around. It says fully constrained. I can double check that up on the browser itself on the sketch icon and kind of do a double check just with my eyes, check the left, check the right, everything checks out, it looks good. So let's go ahead and move on to the extrusion component of this. So I'm gonna be extruding and if I go look on the left example, I'm gonna to wanna to extrude away from the sketch or back away from the sketch, the other direction, not towards me, but the other direction. And let's see, the distance for this one is labeled as 2.875, so that's what I'm gonna do. 2.875 inches. All right, let's see what we have here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I remember from the directions that it said the widths of these two other parts are exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the width given to me by this object. So I'm gonna sketch the back plane and I'm going to project, uh, I'll just project the whole thing. Now, if I'm really worried about this, I can just make them all construction by using this construction toggle button up here. That allows me to keep any of the geometry and references without this impacting my actual um, extrusion, my 3D feature. Now, from here, it just looks like a really simple rectangle, and that's actually the information I have, too, so that makes sense. Let's see, a 1.5. I already know the width because it's the same as this. Now, you see when I clicked in there, it gave me um, a coincident at that corner, a coincident at that corner. If, say, I just did it and maybe I got one corner, but I didn't get the other, well, I can very simply just use a coincident and say these two points need to be at the same point. Although that was a little weird, didn't like that. I can try to drag and drop. Let's see, go right there, perfect. Now, my width is already set. So hence, uh, that's why this says it's all the same width. Even though I don't know the actual size of the width, I can just use the existing geometry to create that. Now, I do know that the length or height, depending on how you're looking at this, is given at 1.5 inches. So let's put that in. And I'm fully constrained. It's just a really simple rectangle. So let's go ahead and move forward. Now, it looks to me like this extrudes away. So that is the correct direction. Now let's get the right dimension in there, which is given as 0.25 inches, 250, same thing. 
and that part looks good. Now we're going to just kind of continue around the circle and I'm actually going to sketch on the bottom plane of that last object. And I can project geometry again, or I can actually just, I could probably rectangle just off of what's given here. And it is, I believe the same length from what it looks like. So I can just purely use the existing geometry again. And I actually don't need any dimensions at this point. It is fully constrained just because I'm using a rectangle and tracing over what was already there. So using that, let's go ahead and extrude that. The depth of that is also going to be 0.25 inches. Uh, it is going to go down. And I am almost done. There's my uh, the bulk of my three-dimensional shape. The last thing I have to do is cut the hole. Now, this could be accomplished with multiple cuts, but I like working quick and easy. So I'm going to try and replicate this circle. And it looks to me like this top plane is where I want to sketch. Uh, it really looks like it's just a simple circle. So um, it cuts right in the middle. So I'm going to use this. Um, if we look, it's giving me this vertical relationship. I'm going to use that. Why not? Everything looks clean and symmetrical, so that looks appropriate. Then it also gives me a dimension between the center point of this bottom line and the center point there. So let's just keep it simple here. So there's that bottom center point. There's a center point of the circle. That number is 0.375 or 387 inch. And let's see, what dimensions do I need now? Let's see. I need to know the size of the circle. So that is 0 0.450 according to the schematic. Let's see what else. What else am I missing here? Maybe it, ah, oh, okay. So I have a distance, but what I thought put in that vertical dimension didn't really do it. So I'm just going to have to do it myself. Center point, those two points, and now I'm fully constrained. All right, now when we do our extrusion, what we're going to do is a cut. So in the extrusion menu, go to output and your boolean is going to be a cut. And here's where it can get slightly tricky. So I know this needs to go down to cut the first body, but I need it to go down into the second body. The question is, how do I determine how much to go in there? Well, I have some options here. I can go, th if I went through all, that'd be too much. If I went to, that would be this phase, but not quite enough. What about this? This is to next. So none of those really work. So what I need to do is give it a, uh, a dimension. And let's think about how I could figure out this dimension. So I'm going to introduce you to this measuring tool. So if you go to the tool toolbar, the tool uh, tab, there is a measure tool. If I can figure out how far from this plane to this plane, all I have to do is add 0.125 inches and that'll be my number so that's what i'm going to do so that is 1.5 inches and i'm going to add 0.125 inches because that's how far into that second body my um, extrusion is going to cut and then it should be perfect after that so i could even type it in here if i'm not such a math whiz 1.5 plus 0.125 make sure it's cutting, doing the correct operation, and click OK. How does that look? Well, almost there. Let's see. This is kind of the orientation I want. There we go. I'm actually going to reset that to home because we always want to have it looking like the example. I think that looks absolutely perfect. Hopefully your eyes tell you the same thing. Um, there's no features I need to turn off. My orientation's good. I reset home. So this part is ready to save and move on. Make sure that uh, you give it a good name before you save it so you can uh, recognize it as other than just part three. And check out the next video for object number four.